Hi dear cricket fans, uh, this is uh, Ram with Cricket Happenings once again and right now I'm going to do a preview of the fourth one day international which is going to be starting between England and Pakistan tomorrow at the Mecca of English cricket, the Lord's Cricket Ground. Uh, I'm told that it's going to be a very fine day tomorrow with the rain staying away so we're going to have a very good game. As you know this series has been uh, brimming with a lot of life uh, because even though Pakistan have been passing through a lot of uh, uh, turmoil right now um, the, 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 their talent which is there is really evident because even though there's no Mohammad Amir Salman Bhatt or Mohammad Asif but Pakistan are doing in a fine fashion in fact they ran England close in the previous two matches uh, and now uh, it is the third match where they actually converted that into a victory with some uh, tremendous reverse swing bowling seen by Umar Gul who actually nipped six wickets uh, to turn the match uh, Pakistan's uh, way the other way and so right now it's 2-1 and uh, uh, we are looking out for a real gripping contest tomorrow uh, at the Lord's Cricket Ground. So just doing the preview of the match here, as far as England is concerned, well, England Andrew Strauss uh, has been uh, hitting his traps. He has been doing very well. He's been in some very good form here. Steve Davis, well, uh, the other day he failed, but he is also uh, having a good touch, I would say. Uh, and Jonathan Trott, well, Jonathan Trott has also been doing well. But the good news for England here is that Ian Bell has made it back to the English uh, One Day International team uh, on the uh, on the efforts that he showed uh, in the uh, 40 overs international, which was the CB40 final, uh, where he uh, actually played uh, very well. And so the selectors took notice of that. And Ian Bell has been given an opportunity. He has also also a century to his credit uh, in that version, uh, uh, in that 40 version where he played. Uh, Paul Collingwood also. Uh, maybe Paul Collingwood needs to do a bit more. Uh, there's a bit of uh, consistency uh, which has been lacking as far as Collingwood is concerned, I would say. Uh, Ian Morgan uh, again has been uh, doing well, uh, getting some, um, I mean, he has been getting uh, getting going, uh, but uh, at a very vital stage the other day too, as soon as Ian Morgan went, the things really uh, got transformed and the pendulum started swinging Pakistan's way. Uh, but not taking any credit away from Umar Gul's reverse uh, swing balling there. Uh, Michael Yardi, uh, Michael Yardi also uh, needs to uh, really step it up a notch. His uh, balling, uh, I, I feel that maybe he could bowl uh, in a much better manner uh, in tandem with Graham Swan, who has been doing his duty. Uh, Tim Bresnan uh, was looking impressive the other day. James Anderson and Tim Bresnan were the ones who actually took six wickets between them, and they moved the ball uh, very well and also were responsible for Pakistan, um, uh, Pakistan openers uh, getting to the pavilion and also Stuart Broad uh, who actually uh, doubles up uh, as an all-rounder now already has one test century uh, uh, un under his belt right now. Uh, well, as far as uh, Pakistan are concerned, well Pakistan um, looking uh, good. Uh, in fact, it was, uh, as you know, Kamran Akhman and Mohamed Afiz had been uh, giving the good start at the first two one-day nationals. Uh, I was always talking about the opening starts. Uh, but basically, on the third one-day international, they couldn't really get on to a good start. And that's what uh, made Pakistan uh, not score more than 242. They ended up at 242. Uh, so that was something uh, where um, the openers, uh, I'm sure, uh, they'll be looking into that. But I'm, I've been very, very impressed with Asad Shafiq, the 20-year-old boy from Pakistan. And I, I, I seem to have a sneaking feeling now that he is going to be uh, like a sort of an Umar Akmal slowly coming out into the open. Because the way he has been playing, uh, the one thing is he's very good. Uh, he's very young. He moves well. He can take the runs. He, he he sprints well. His fielding is good, and batting is something. Oh, I saw one of his stroke, which uh, he just a gentle flick of the wrist, and he the ball spread across to the boundary. So that shows the mark of a great batsman. Asad Shafiq, uh, I think uh, he's really improving a great deal there. Uh, Mohammad Yusuf, well, uh, Mohammad Yusuf has been trying to tailor himself to this uh, version of uh, cricket and he has been playing well uh, but uh, well uh, he needs to go uh, a bit longer than what he, he could be. Uh, Fawad Alam the other day uh, finally showed uh, that he has the staying power and he held the innings together uh, but then I couldn't really go on but uh, well that was something uh, a good impression that he made uh, in the uh, Pakistani lineup. Umar Akmal well Umar Akmal has not been able to get on to the big ones now that is what is required from Umar Akmal. Umar Akmal has been doing his duty, no doubt about that. But Umar Akmal has to go on. He has to play a very good innings. He has to, I mean, if you see the experience there, it's uh, Shahid Afridi, uh, 
Kamran Akmal and Umar Akmal also had to come to the party. Shahid Afridi in his brief stint at the crease uh, was looking very, very aggressive and uh, very unfortunately he was run out. Abdul Razak also um, uh, came into some good form, smacking a six and some boundaries. Uh, Umar Gul, uh, well, he is the uh, person who can uh, really hit some big ones when the time comes. Uh, and uh, Shoei Bakhtar, I, I have to talk about Shoei Bakhtar. Shoei Bakhtar has been looking very impressive throughout this three one day internationals. Uh, but even though events were, but his bowling has been good. He has been off on the mark, and uh, it has been very, very refreshing to see Shoaib Bakhtar uh, putting up a very, very disciplined performance for Pakistan. And Saeed Ajmal, uh, also the Red Amos spinner, has been uh, doing his job of uh, unveiling these his off spinners and his dusra. And Saeed Ajmal is also a handy bat. So all in all, uh, as I said, 2-0 um, up in the series, 2-1 up in the series, England. Uh, but uh, they are not going to have it easy. Uh, Pakistan uh, would be breathing uh, down their neck now and if uh, Pakistan could actually uh, sneak in a win tomorrow uh, that would actually uh, set the scales uh, in, a, in, a, in balance there with the fourth ODI if it will be 2-2 two, two, and the fifth ODI at Southampton which starts on 22nd September uh, would be uh, a really really interesting game so but um, well all in all uh, dear cricket fans we are looking out for a very good display by both the teams and uh, continue uh, this series uh, in such gripping fashion as it has been happening in this uh, Nato series in those uh, first three one day internationals and uh, well a word for Pakistan as I said the talent uh, whatever they have uh, even though they are crippled they have been doing a great job uh, uh, really uh, done a great job keep it up uh, guys there and uh, well as far as uh, so right now I'm just uh, shifting the focus here from the preview and um, uh, since uh, there is some space left uh, as far as uh, YouTube is uh, concerned as far as the broadcast is concerned um, uh, we are picking up play here the Champions League 2020 match uh, which is uh, right now underway uh, between the Mumbai Indians and Royal Challengers Bangalore the all Indian uh, match is happening here at uh, Durban uh, over here in the Champions League 2020 the 15th match of the group B and Mumbai Indians are the ones who actually uh, batted first and uh, racked up 165 to 7. Right now the match is underway and it is in a very very interesting situation. Bangalore, uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore chasing 165 for 166 to win the match. Currently are 123 for 4 uh, in the 17th over uh, with Malinga coming into ball to Dravid. And Dravid is the one who has been there. Uh, this is a very very uh, uh, very quick delivery from Malinga. And Dravid was uh, really, uh, really very lucky uh, to, you know, uh, get it as a yorkerling delivery as he really, really runs in hard and uh, bowls there at Rahul Dravid. Uh, Virat Kohli is 16 not out of 10 bones. Rahul Dravid is 67 of 52 balls. So it was really holding the fort for Bangalore and the hopes for Bangalore. Uh, but they need 42 runs more in 20 balls. So this is a very good match, dear cricket fans. But uh, I don't know whether I'll be able to go the whole hog. As long as this broadcast goes, I will go. After that, uh, you'll have to wait for my uh, cricket report to come back. Well, in the meanwhile, uh, we are in the 17th over. It's at 124 for four. Uh, Mumbai earlier, uh, the Mumbai Indians um, uh, were not off to a good start. They lost Sachin Tendulkar early to Pravin Kumar, uh, and then uh, it was some big hitting coming in from uh, Kiran Polat failed today, and it was Saurabh Tiwari who made 38. Uh, and some very good hitting from Dwayne Bravo who took 22 runs of a Kumble over by hitting him for two sixes and uh, and a few boundaries. So in the meanwhile, the fifth ball from Malinga to Dravid is a, a bouncer and well, that's it. Uh, he, he, he can't do anything there and well, on the bounce, it went to the uh, uh, wicket keeper. So we are still waiting here as uh, Malinga is coming into bowl and uh, as far as uh, uh, England, as far as Bangalore, Royal Challenge Bangalore are concerned, they require 40 runs in 18 balls. 40 runs of 18 balls as Malinga ends this over with Dravid actually uh, uh, put, uh, hitting the ball to deep mid wicket and actually going for two runs. So Dravid moves his score by two. He moves to 69 of 54 balls with eight fours. Virat Kohli is keeping him company 16 of 10 balls and this match is really hotting up. 40 runs required in the next three overs for Royal Challengers Bangalore, dear cricket fans. And as we wait here, and uh, uh, certain other things that I would like to talk about uh, is uh, 38 was uh, scored by Saurabh Tiwari of Mumbai Indians, 29 from Bravo of 17 balls with three fours and two sixes, um, and 41 at the top of the over by Shikhar Divan, the opener, uh, who made 41 of 37 balls, two fours and two sixes. Uh, Dale Steen was uh, very good, three for 26 of his uh, quota. 
and for Royal Challengers right now it's Rahul Dravid they lost Callis uh, for 15 Uthappa was out for 6 Ross Taylor was out for 9 Cramel and White was out for 7 so right now dear cricket fans are uh, still waiting there as to how the match is being progressing uh, I'm just uh, going on as far as possible that I can till this uh, particular broadcast ends here and let's see what is the latest uh, let's see uh, let's go back to uh, Durban right now and see and right now Virat Kohli uh, in the uh, it was um, Ahmed uh, who was bowling the ball and actually Virat Kohli has sent that for a six so that's a very very confident shot from Virat Kohli uh, which really uh, reduces the equation for the Royal Challengers Bangalore now they require 34 runs in the next 17 deliveries and Virat Kohli has really really set the pace here by slamming that ball for six and well something uh, which was expected because they had to go uh, and uh, do some uh, play some slam bang cricket now if they are to actually win the match so in the meanwhile uh, we are having the in fact the the, the six that he hit was a half volley uh, which actually was swung by Virat Kohli with tremendous timing out of the ground it went into the crowd there as the next ball from Ahmed Abu, Abu Nechim is the bowler he had uh, figures of 3.2 overs no made him 1 for 30 comes in and bowls to uh, Kohli Kohli this time uh, just uh, gets two runs uh, for the stroke and the score for Royal Challengers Bangalore moves on to 134 for 4 and we are in the 18th over uh, right now so Virat Kohli has taken his score on to 24 right now as dear cricket fans uh, we just wait here with Virat Kohli settling down and Virat Kohli the next ball from Ahmed to Kohli has resulted in a single to Kohli and Kohli moves on to 25 Bangalore 135 for 4 in the 18th over and he, they have 6 wickets and another 15 balls uh, to uh, get 31 runs to win this match against Mumbai Indians so things are really really hotting up here at the Durban cricket ground here in South Africa in the Champions League 2020 the 15th match Group B Mumbai Indians versus Royal Challengers Bangalore as uh, we still wait for Abu Nachim as he is called uh, and in the meanwhile the next ball to Kohli uh, well are uh, still waiting there as uh, Kohli has actually played that ball uh, straight to the fielder uh, as we wait here for uh, Virat Kohli and the baller Abu Nachim uh, as I'm just waiting uh, to see what happens here well dear cricket fans uh, there seems to be some st uh, stoppage there so please bear with me dear cricket fans here um, and uh, let me see whether I can uh, uh, go the whole hog and complete this uh, uh, commentary and uh, at least uh, we know the outcome uh, which team uh, is actually going to win the match in the meanwhile uh, the, this ball to Dravid has resulted in extras as a buy has been uh, stolen there so one buy score moves by one 136 for four in the 18th over Royal Challengers Bangalore chasing 166 are 136 for four currently in the 18th over uh, so dear cricket fans it has always been a pleasure uh, bringing you the Champions League 2020 but as I said there has not been a very good response unfortunately so it has not been I have not been able to uh, really you know uh, get you the full match reports uh, get into the nitty gritty uh, basically I'm also being strapped for time uh, but uh, I do my best as I said the cricket is my passion I just love doing it here and the meanwhile uh, Ahmed comes in and bowls to Kohli Kohli gets it on the pads uh, and it has been flicked down the square leg and uh, there's a single in fact just before the delivery uh, Sachin had actually gone to uh, the bowler and uh, just uh, whispered a few words uh, to him uh, just to pay him, probably uh, tell him a few tricks uh, but well it resulted in a single 137 for 4 18th over in progress right now Bangalore required another 29 runs of the next uh, 13 deliveries with 6 wickets standing as uh, we wait here for Abu Nechim uh, to actually bowl the last ball as he comes in and bowls to um, uh, David uh, Dravid and Dravid actually uh, tries to cut it but uh, well he can only get a single just managed to get a single there and at the end of 18 overs Bangalore 130 Royal Challengers Bangalore 138 for 4 